Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here. How are you? Thanks so much for joining me and welcome to a special review for legendary new wave of British heavy metal band Saxon and their brand new album Hell, Fire and Damnation. 24th studio album also featuring for the first time brand new guitarist Brian Tatler of Diamond Head in the lineup. The album was just released on Friday, January 19th of 2024. I'm going to get into all that. I'll break it down, do a review and an unboxing. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel and haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also leave a comment, hit like. All those things do help support my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus by turning on notifications, you're going to stay up to date on really cool videos just like this one here for Saxon, Hellfire and Damnation album review. I always like to kick off with a little bit of history to help set the tone for everything and stuff I'm going to talk about in the review. So the band formed way back in 1975 under the original name Son of a Bitch. But what I find fascinating about that is the band has been around for nearly 50 years, 49 years in fact. And they're notable for leading the new wave of British heavy metal movement along with bands like Iron Maiden and Def Leppard. And while certainly important part of all that, they were never as big as either of those two bands, yet they still created quite a legacy for themselves nonetheless. Uh, beginning with their self-titled debut in 1979 and then continuing for the next five albums, the band itself made some amazing music that really stood out amongst the new wave of heavy metal scene. Uh, their second, third, and fourth albums, Wheels of Steel in 1980, Strong Armor of the Law in 1980 as well, Denim and Leather of 1981, all pure classics of the genre itself. And the title track, Denim and Leather, um, also was one of the uh, movement's biggest anthems. So right in and of itself there, uh, the band has, uh, you know, carved out a little niche for themselves. But throughout the band's career, they've never broken up. So in 49 years, they've continued going this whole time. Uh, having 24 albums under their belt, 24 albums of original material, because they do have two covers albums as well. But up until just this past year in 2023, the two mainstays of the group have always been Biff Byford on vocals and guitarist Paul Quinn. But last year, Paul Quinn decided to retire from the band. Initially, when I heard that, I really felt a cause for concern. Uh, certainly, his departure was going to change the sound. What would the band sound like going forward? Um, but I have to say, very, very uh, relieved that they brought in another new wave of British heavy metal uh, legend in guitarist Brian Tatler from Diamond Head, which brings us to this new album, Hellfire and Damnation. So let's talk about it now. Uh, as I mentioned, 24th studio album, 26 overall when we count in those two covers albums. It is produced by Andy Sneap, who's worked with Judas Priest, Megadeth, Testament, Exodus, just to name a few. He's currently out on the road with Judas Priest. Um, there's 10 tracks on the album. It clocks in at 42 minutes, which actually feels like the right length for this. Doesn't uh, you know stick around so long that you get tired of it and it doesn't wrap up too early. It's just the right amount of time, in my opinion. Track one, The Prophecy, is a narrated intro, so really there's nine songs in all on this album. As I mentioned, it is the first album to feature new guitar player Brian Tatler of Diamond Head, uh, but Paul Quinn, original guitarist, does appear on the album, two songs in fact, track number four, Fire and Steel, and track ten, Supercharger. Unfortunately, though, there are no writing credits, at least none that I could find on the album. It does mention that Biff wrote all the lyrics, but it doesn't tell us who wrote the songs themselves, because I ultimately would like to know how much Brian brought to the recordings, how much he influenced it. Uh, the reason being that um, for this album here, the band has really shed its late 90s, early 2000s power metal sound. And it also has shed that more aggressive growling vocal approach that Biff has been doing really kind of over the last 10 years. So for me, at least, this album is a killer return to form album. Um kind of much in the vein of their 80s output. So much more hard rock than metal sound. I mean, they're still full on a metal band. But as I said, they had gotten into that power metal uh, vein. So back into the more hard rock metal approach. 
Everyone here is in fine form. Biz vocals are showing a bit more wear, but you know what can you do at the age that these musicians are? Um, despite the vocals being a little more rough at times, I still think he sign, sounds in fine form when he does sing, though, just pointing out there is a, a bit of change to his vocals. The biggest standout, though, for me, of course, is the addition of Brian Tatler. And what we do get, as far as credits on here, is who plays what solos. So whenever Brian takes over the solo on it, I have found it to be a breath of fresh air and, and a change in uh, what I would have expected from the album as a whole. Uh, the shakeup I'm finding has really uh, given something new to the band, breathe new life within them. The album, quite simply, is some of the best material that this band has recorded in their 49 long years uh, in the industry. So let's go ahead and talk about some of those killer standout songs on here. Track two, Hell, Fire, and Damnation. First single off the album. Obviously, it's the title track as well. I wasn't expecting much when I heard this song, but immediately it impressed me and thereby set the bar really high for the rest of the album. I did not know what to expect. It's the only one I had first checked out before getting the album. I like to check out one track, know where it's going to be going, and then I, you know, wait and reserve uh, a sit down and listen for the entire album so that I can digest it all in one go. My favorite song on the album is track number four, Madam Guillotine. This one here starts with a really interesting build in it before kicking in with some nice galloping guitar. Um, turns into a great rocker. It's also got some of Biff's best vocals on it, and it's got my favorite guitar solo of the album. Brian takes the first part. Doug takes the second part. I gotta give a little shout out to Doug, show him some love, because I feel like his guitar parts on this album also elevated. Now, whether it's because Brian came in, there's some new guitar blood in there to help uh, him to bounce off of or what, but Doug's always been great, but I really like what he's done here as well. I just feel like this album as a whole is a killer guitar record. Track six, Kublai Khan and the Merchant of Venice, a killer, powerful driving tune, fierce, hard rocker. This one just chugs along with all the right parts. Everything you want from a Saxon song is in this one. And of course, the guitar solos are killer as well. Track seven, Pirates of the Airways, a great song about music DJs playing what they want, not doing what they're told. You know, in today's programmed world, uh, we simply don't get that. It doesn't exist. It's a nice, cool throwback. And track eight, another song I love, 1066, one of the heaviest songs on the album. It's got some pounding drums, killer guitars. Um, it's about the day the Saxons were slain. Uh, but Brian comes in with his guitar solo, very melodic solo at that. It counters the heaviness and creates an interesting dichotomy in the song. It's one of the reasons it stands out for me. So let's go ahead and take a look at the album. There's a front cover. It's got some killer art on it. Everything you'd expect or want from a Saxon album. And our back cover there, we've got the guys there, Biff right in the middle. And we've got uh, Brian over here. Uh, there's your uh, track listing going right across from it. We got the spine. And when we open this up here, that's our interior of it. Pop out the disc just so you can see what's behind it, which is a whole lot of nothing. Um, booklet. Let's take a look at that. Same thing on the front cover there. And just an enlargement of the art. Talks about the band members. As I said, no writing credits. That kind of bummed me out. We got the lyrics. Talks about uh, who plays the solos. But again, no writing credits on that. Killer picture of the guys there in the middle. And again with the lyrics. A little bit more of that art blown up. Not really showing us anything new. Thank yous and just the logo on the backside there. So nothing crazy in terms of the photos or the art or anything of that nature, but all in all, very good uh, you know, art and packaging on it. It's what you'd expect and what you would want from this. So bottom line, you know, over the last decade or so, uh, the band's albums have become sort of hit or miss for me. Uh, Carpe Diem in 2022, though, uh, that was a really good album. Honestly, I didn't think it could get much better than that. Uh, I have to say, you know, in the band's 49-year-long career, I kind of thought that was going to be the peak of everything as they start to fade out here. But then they come back with this album here, and it's really shown me that the band still has a lot left to say, and I'm so glad for that. 
for a band that has been around nearly 50 years to put out such a killer album at this point, I think is amazing. As I said, the shakeup must have done some good for the band because uh, not only is Brian shining on this, adding a different dynamic, but I feel like Doug has really stepped up his game as well. And all in all, everyone is sounding great on this album. So for me, this album has some of the best material that the band has recorded from throughout their career. I can't say that it necessarily rivals anything from that original five album run but good stuff that can stand up next to it. I say do yourself a favor and check this out if you're a fan of Saxon, fan of new wave of British heavy metal music, or simply just like killer heavy metal. This album's for you. Definitely check it out. I don't think you're going to be disappointed about it. And so there you go. That is the album review for Saxon, Hellfire, and Damnation album review. Um, definitely go check it out. Let me know your thoughts. I've already heard from a lot of you guys thinking this was a great album. Hopefully more of you feel the same. I definitely think this album deserves some love and attention. All right, everyone. Take care. Have a good one. And I'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.